Hello and welcome everyone, I'm the Sparrow's Journey and I'm gonna be taking a first look into Diesel Stormers. From the look of the menu background, you can already recognize, yeah, it is diesel style punkish game. Stormers, well, because there will be a storm out in the game when you're shooting orcs and goblins. The promise this game is a mix between Metal Slug and Diablo. I think calling, th calling it Diablo is actually stretching a little tad too much, but there's a certainly a lot of Metal Slug action game in there. Diesel Stormers is a run and gun action game. It is published and developed by Black Forest Games, same company that made Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams. I think that game was very appraised, so we should expect good things about Diesel Stormers. It was kickstarted, successfully kickstarted on May 23. Before anything else, the Black Forest Games guys were kind enough to provide me with three more keys to give away. Actually, the purpose of those keys were for friends to play with me on a co-op multiplayer, but because I don't have too many friends in the world, I will give them to you on a giveaway. So when this video reaches 40 likes, is that too much? Hope it's not too much to ask for. So just comment below if you want the key and I will put it you on the drawing. So let's uh, explore a little bit of the game, shall we? In the options we don't have too many options to choose from, you can remap your keys. In the video, uh, you really are lacking some options. Uh, this is a 3D game, so you should actually have more options to uh, incorporate all the computers you can. In the audio, normal stuff, I'm actually gonna uh, lower a little bit of the music volume. Not even have the credits section yet. Diesel Stormers will be released on Steam on Early Access, so a lot of what you see here will be developed in the future. Diesel Stormers goes into single player or multiplayer, but it doesn't go into PvP, and that's a big hit for me. Uh, specifically, in my opinion, when you're playing a game like this, you're expecting to have PvP uh, somewhere down the line. I know Metal Slug, for instance, didn't have PvP, but that was a long, long time ago. I would expect something like uh, the showdown effect, where you can fight each other. But Diesel Stormers is aiming for single player only, and with the solution or the option of going into co-op. Because I can't go into the multiplayer because no one is playing right now, the game is not even released yet. I'm gonna go and explore the single player part of the game. And here I am. So Diesel Stormers... Uh, you can already see the style, all very steampunkish or dieselpunkish, they're all almost the same. And I'm controlling this guy over here. I have one big complaint about Diesel Stormers, but I reckon this is because it's still in early access. You don't get any introduction to the lore or to the setting of the game. So I don't know why I'm, I'm playing this guy that looks like a knight with a big gun. But I gotta say, I love the art style. The guy, the guy is very well designed. I like, I like the, the weapon and I like his backpack, looks pretty cool. And I'm gonna use this sort of workshop. This is the place where you kind of get ready to go into a mission, into Diesel Stormers. I will explain it a little bit more in the future, I just want to show you some gameplay first. Before that, maybe not, maybe not, I'll just get and select the mission right off. Let's select the most easiest one for now. And then get to it so that I can explain you the basics movements in Diesel Stormers. So the objective here is assault the enemy outpost, which in other words is pretty much kill almost everything and the last boss included. So here we go, horizontal style of gameplay. And this place is called Ravensdale. Diesel Stormers was actually called Ravensdale before it was renamed to Diesel Stormers, and we are inhabitants of this city. But the goblins and orcs took it from them, from us, so we must get it back. That's basically a very brief explanation of the lore I have for you. So I'm this guy over here, I can jump, I have some sort of jetpack in my back that allows me to stand and hold a little bit in the air like this. I'm pressing space for that. I can also dash in every direction I want like that. 
And I can shoot, obviously. This is my gun and the loadout I chose for this specific level. And also, you can notice this sort of magnets mechanics. I, I actually don't know why this exists, but it exists in the game. And I have always uh, this sort of laser ray on me. So if I want, for instance, to have a big, huge jump, I can press my left shift key and I will jump very high in the direction that maggot is located. So right now it is located to that big uh, ball of energy like right there. If I press left shift, I will jump right onto it. And here are the little goblins I must kill. So here we go. Let's show you some gameplay and shut up. There's also an overdrive skill which you can use, which is, is some sort of your special ultimate uh, uh, skill, which will be powered by this things you pick up in the map. And then you can see it recharging over there in the top right corner. In the top left corner, you can see my HP and my armor's HP. So throughout the map, you will always have to fight a big kick-ass boss. And you cannot kill that guy, or you cannot, or you have a much lower chance to survive and kill it if you don't do things throughout the map, because I can skip everything. I can just not kill anything and just skip to the big huge boss and try to kill it. But I will be uh, obviously not successful because I need to pick up things throughout the, this adventure in the map. Things like upgrading my armor. I will have a chance of finding perks that will improve my armor. That will be required to finish the last boss. Let's kill those zeppelins or try to... This big tar glue slows me down. I don't think it actually damaged me. I hope I'm right there. But it slows me down to a point where goblins will get to me and eventually kill me. These are some sort of uh, bigger orcs. Now each time you see a platform where it's some sort of very dark layout like this one, I cannot jump down or up from here. So I cannot go through it. But each time I have one of these, I can jump down and up with no problem. So for instance in here, well this is not a good case because I always fall down. These guys are infinitely always respawning from this Transgoop station. They come out of it. Oh, here is one example of what I've said with the upgrading armor thing. You will see how it rolls. Here we go. I got a new piece of armor. Like this one, too. And it will give me more HP in the end. It's not an upgrade as in... I don't know, more jump. Or more power. It just increases my HP for now. You can in combine elements in the world. Like for instance, if you combine the goo or try to target uh, for them to hit this fire with the goo, it will flame and it will kill them. Whoopsie! That, that was bad. Step on the fire. Stepping on the fire is never good. Go. Now you see this big, huge shots I'm doing with this gun. That's because that's the loadout I've chose. You can change your loadout in Diesel Stormers and choose, for instance, a more fire rating weapon, but with a less kick in it. So it will do less damage, but it will fire more. You can pick up loadouts to, for instance, ricochet in the walls with your bullets, or have less recoil, I think. All of that can be changed, and I will sh show you in a little bit when you end this level. These guys are stubborn. Jesus, God. One more interesting thing, I can try and kick these guys out of the platforms with push like this. Oh, this is one of the hazards items in the game. You can just throw it and it will act like a bomb. That unfortunately kill no one because I aimed it wrong. As you can see, right now I'm not having too much difficulties. Oh, I am at 50% of my health, but... What I want to clear out is that in the, in the mission selecting panel, you have like six or five different missions. 
And as incredible as it might seem, when you go from one to the other, it increases the difficulty by a lot. It exponentially increases the difficulty. It's crazy. I think they should really treat that. I could also obviously jump wherever I can. I would want to go down here and use these bombs, but I cannot skip these black walls. So these guys, right now, only spawn black tar goo. Hard orc cafe. <laughs> but in the future, they will like, uh, spawn like bombs, really difficult things. That was a that that is a bug. It clipped through the wall. Now these power up station things, they will protect me for a certain number of hits. So if this guy tries to hit me, this will ricochet that bullet. I will show the overdrive skill in a moment. I normally save it for the last boss, which is obviously more hard. The overdrive pretty much protects me from every hit and at the same time damages them. It's a real ultimate. Now it would be a good idea to spend it now, ouch, so that I could recharge it again. If you haven't noticed, this gun and this loadout basically kills one of these big guys with one shot. If I choose like a higher rate weapon, oh my god, I really don't want to lose this level. Now, I know the next levels will be much harder. I want at least to be successful at this one and complete it. This is this supposedly. There, I died. Uh, just when I was getting to the last boss. Well, no batting. Let's get back and go into my workshop. So here is where you select your mission. Here's also where you just change your weapon loadout. So I can just come in here and choose between different frames, different engines and different barrels. I have different barrels as you can see, at least three of them right now. And each of them will have different statistics. So, for instance, I, I am not sure actually what these numbers mean, or most of them. But for instance, this one, I believe it will have a higher impact from what I've seen in my experience in playing the game. But it will have a less precision, so if I aim at one point, it might end up there or not. This one will ha have... no, sorry. That's my bad. The statistics are active for the one I'm using or the one I'm clicking on. For so, for instance, this one will have a higher precision than this one that I have right now, but it will have less impact or less bullet speed. I have, I'm actually not sure what this means. Let's choose between different frames as well. So this frame will allow me to have a higher or a lower bullet speed. Is it? but a higher bullet rate and it will increase my bullet drop rate I am actually not sure and they don't have still don't have tooltips for this what I can do what I can manage to do is just get out of the shop and try to test it myself so for instance this barrel shoots like this let's test a different one Let's go, for instance, this one that lowers this stat by 1000. Here we go. I don't see too much difference. I'm gonna select a new frame, and here is where I really notice some difference. Here we go. This one shot a lot more bullets in the same period of time. But they are not as strong, so they will no not do uh, much damage. This actually ricochets, if I remember correctly. But it should be a barrel difference, not really a frame dis uh, difference. So, I like this frame. Uh, I like to have a higher impact shot that does more damage. But between barrels, I'm actually not sure what to do with them. Uh, I mean... Less 700 is a lot when compared to plus 12, but I believe this two 
stats uh, vary differently. But for the sake of trying a different one, let's just choose this one. Or maybe this one, because actually this one increases everything compared to this one. Okay, finalize. Oh, you can also scrap for components and craft yourself new components to your weapons. I never tried that, but I don't actually think it is included in the early access of the game. So let's finalize this. We have everything set. We need to select a mission first. This is Ravensdale, okay? This is the map of Ravensdale, and it, it right now it sort of looks like random. Like, I have no idea, or I have no feeling of progression here. I know, for instance, this level is from... It has a challenge number of 24. This one on 15, and this 9. This sort of tells you the difficulty you will have between levels. Right now, we only have two different type of missions. We have the secondary objectives, which should be, for instance, tear down or banners. And the ultimate goal would be assault the enemy outpost, which is pretty much destroying the last boss. I would also like to mention that the levels are randomly generated. So it's procedure generated. Uh, you won't have a level equal to another one. They are randomly uh, constructed with the game engine. I am kind of skeptical. If I didn't finish a level 6 challenge, will I be <laughs> able to finish a level 24. Let's choose 23. And this also gives me a secondary objective to tear down or banners. So let's go for that. Accept mission. It's also uh, already selected. So let's jump on it. Now they have a lot more things planned for the final release of the game. And I will name uh, those objectives when we actually finish this level. So let's focus a little bit and try to actually complete this one. I don't believe I will be able to do that because I didn't finish a level 6 one. Ah, great. I should also mention... Oh, here's the secondary objective, picking up these uh, work banners. That they will get destroyed by their own doing. So, if a large orc fires a bullet that will explode, it will target the goblins as well, and it will kill them. Ah, god damn it. These freaking goblins seem harmless. Because you cannot target them when they are meleeing you. That's really annoying. It's really difficult to aim at them. Oh, chaos coming. The enemies also become harder, I would suppose. Now, as you can see, you only have like three types of enemies so far. The goblin zeppelins. Ah, I need that. The big orcs, like this one. Okay, four types then. Because there's this big one that apparently pursues you in melee madness and there's also this one with some sort of backpack that shoots uh, bullets on you some sort of... what the hell? here we go and there's also the little goblins oh shh! <laughs> that, that was last resort solution come on, die! these guys are so annoying. There you go. Don't think I'll hit him, but screw that. I am just looking for the secondary objective, and at the same time, trying to look for armor upgrades. That's my goal right now. Oh my god, what a mess. And my FPS are hurting right now. The game runs pretty well, but... I don't have trouble with most games, so I can't really measure that. Ouch. Yep, the game becomes much more harder in level 20. I'm trying to avoid everything. If this is like this in single player, I wonder in co-op. It should be K. 
chaos. Cluster crap. Hello, I can just throw this guy down there. If I had the strength, apparently I cannot. This guy's too strong to be pushed. Go away. He's not strong to contain my hits. There's another orc banner. You can access it down here. I also want to pick this overdrive. Oh shit. This overdrive recharging items so that I can use it on the last boss. Ah, that's one there. I can I access it? Here. Damn it. Okay. Does one guy respawn each time I go near this thing? No, not confirmed. Let's see what's up there. Nothing, I'm cool. I don't think I've skipped any work banner so far. Sometimes I kill these guys with this dash push thing. Sometimes they are only just pushed. And I don't know how is that calculated. Done. There's an armor upgrade down there. I want that. God damn it. Stop firing! Okay, this is really going bad. I shouldn't be hitting these guys. Because there's a black wall over here. And actually, it shouldn't be coming to me. Because it's an actual black wall. Come on, I'm gonna die, ain't I? If you skip too many of the map... Oh, there's a, there's a large boss. I'm gonna activate the overdrive ability. Where is he? Yeah, there he is, up there. And try to kill me. Uh, try to kill him, I would say. Now this protects me at the same time hits this guy. There we go. Completed. Last boss done. Reward. A new engine. And a crafting part. Let's see what we can do with that, and how it actually changes the gameplay. New engine. Okay, it increases basically everything. It seems that engine improves my armor. Is it? This is defensive abilities, isn't it? Let's put it up. There we go. It changed a little bit of the weapon there. Didn't change much in the weapon gameplay. But basically... Ladies and gentlemen, this is Diesel Stormers. I think Black Forest Games should be a German company, because Stormers has that little German character there. I don't know if that's related or not. In the full version, they promise to have more storylines and hierarchy storylines. They promise to have more equipable items like helmets, shoulders, uh, maybe uh, something for your feet, maybe gonglets. They will have armor abilities, uh, something like, for instance, if you click a certain key, uh, your shoulder will have a flame or a bomb coming up, something like that. They will have new mission types, not only to destroy orc banners, but they will have like speed runs, defending bases, etc. They will have more interactable objects, like if you find a cannon, you will be able to shoot it in the map. Obviously, new enemies. This is something I'm noticing in the Diesel Stormers. Lack of new uh, enemies. And character progression. I have no idea how they are handling that character progression, but it would be cool to have some sort of trees. It, you can already customize your gameplay by changing your gun and your equipment. And I really love that in Diesel Stormers. It brings a lot of replayability and encourages you to just go there and explore the maps for new loot. Diesel Stormers will be released on Steam on 17th July on Early Access. So I'll see you next time. I'm the Sparrow Journey. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Bye bye.